And every example that we're going to be talking about is going to be important to understand how the international prices are determined and how the uh, conditions inside the country that we're analyzing affect those world prices or don't. So to, to analyze this, I'm going to use a simple depiction for a particular market for a particular, uh, for a particular good. So what we have here is the world price of the good, the quantity of this product that's traded in the world market. We've got the export supply in the world market. In other words, how much exporters are willing to supply at different prices in the international market. And a world import demand curve, which is the amount that's going to be uh, demanded from, very, from all sources around the world for different uh, prices in the international market. And not surprisingly, the critical world price is going to be given by the intersection of the world supply and world demand. So just simple demand and supply just from a, an international perspective. And in everything we do, this is going to be lying in the background uh, for what happens inside the, the country that we're focusing on. So I want to introduce an idea that's related to this, which is a small country. Now, in, in the, the context of this course, a small country is not geographically small, it's not the number of people that live there, it's not whether or not it's important in international uh, politics, it's about whether or not the country can affect the price of its imported good by anything that it might do internally. Either changes in the quantity demanded inside the, the, the country, changes in government policy, changes in anything. For a small country in the import market, they take the world price as given because they represent such a small portion of the market, the world says, take this price or we're going to go sell someplace else. So imagine the case of, say, Guatemala in international oil markets. Whether or not Guatemala buys more, produces more, uh, does something internally, it, not, it is not going to have an appreciable impact on the international price of this product. So if we think about this from a, the import demand for Guatemala, they are going to be facing a perfectly elastic export supply curve in the world market. If you look at how much they demand, it's going to be for a given world price, take it or leave it. The import demand can go up, it can go down, it doesn't matter. This is the price that the world will bring this product to Guatemala, take it or leave it. So they'll have really no impact on this because of the change over here. Now, we will often not be using that particular depiction of the small country but instead looking at the overall demand curve in Guatemala. Okay. This is not the import demand. This is not one part of demand. This is demand overall. So you've got the domestic demand for the small country. You might have a domestic Supply again. This is overall supply from domestic sources. Overall demand from by from by domestic consumers. And the small country assumption here is going to be represented by a horizontal line that is uh, that depicts the world price, the take it or leave it price for the. Uh, for the uh, for the domestic economy. 
And so demand could shift, supply could shift, but that's the world price. That is the only price that foreigners will accept to bring this product into the small importing country. If we look at this from the standpoint of an export market, Okay, this is, say, exports of wheat from Guatemala. Tiny amounts relative to the world market. They take the world price as given. The example that we will be using is similar to the price story in the, from the import side. We've got the domestic supply in Guatemala. We've got the domestic demand in Guatemala. And if it's a, an export market, then the world price is going to be a take it or leave it price. And the world will, will buy as much as Guatemala wants to sell at this price, take it or leave it. Supply in Guatemala could increase, that's the world price. Demand in Guatemala could decrease, that's the world price. So the small country cannot affect the world price of the product. And this is going to be typically the, the graph we're going to be using when we analyze a small country in its export markets. So let me spend a moment thinking about the differences with a large country. I'm going to do this in a little bit more abstract way. If a large country, say Saudi Arabia in international petroleum markets, begins to ramp up production, because if, let's say they find a new oil field, they bring new supply onto the, the world market, what that is going to do is increase the world export supply because you've got a new source of supply. It's not reacting to a change in price, it's actual increase in supply at every possible price that's in the market. When the large country increases its exports, that is going to tend to drop the world price because they're a big enough market. So for a large country, changes in the domestic conditions is going to affect the world price. For a large country in the export markets, an increase in the supply reduces the price in the international markets. If there's a short, uh, a, uh, a, a reduction in supply, say uh, you know, there's some, if it's a if it's an agricultural product, there's a, a wheat failure in, say, Russia, that's going to decrease the supply. That's going to change the price as well. And we can also think about this from the standpoint of demand. If you think about the role, say, for large countries like the U.S. or the EU as a whole, or Japan as a whole, or China as a whole. If, for example, there's a boom in China that results in an increase demand in China for imported commodities, say oil, because China's having an economic boom, what you're going to see is a tendency for the world price to rise as a consequence of, this, of that changing demand. If the U.S. has a, a financial crisis, a major recession, that will shift the import demand down, reducing the price. So these large countries have impact on the world if they're changing conditions within one final word. We're going to tend to put countries into 
either large country or small country. Now, as a practical matter, every country has some small, tiny impact on the, on the international market. Even if Guatemala starts to uh, export more oil, if, it, if that's one of the commodities that export, it might have a little bit of, a, of, a, of an effect on the world price. Obviously, if it's a big country, like exporter like Saudi Arabia, it has a big impact. So it's a matter of, of, uh, of, of degree to some extent. But in the analysis that we're going to be doing, we're going to have a, a simple dichotomy. You're either a large country or you're a small country. If you're a small country, you take world prices as given. If you're a large country, what happens internally can affect the world price of the product uh, as well. So that's a very critical uh, distinction that will be used again and again when we talk about the impact of trade policies.